Are you wondering why some of the value investors reach the peak of success, while others end up lurking at the bay? Is that low bank balance keeping you from earning passive income and living the life of your dreams? The test isn't about whether you'll get the greatest business idea the first time around. The test is whether you keep learning as you go along. Consider subscribing to the channel for videos about investing and building wealth. Welcome to 5 Star Finance, the place where you learn how to achieve financial freedom. Warren Buffett, one of the most successful investors the world has ever seen, shares inspiring stories about women who had to start from nothing and sold their businesses to the greatest investor of all time. This is by far one of the most inspiring stories Mr. Buffett has delivered and he also gives really good advice to all entrepreneurs and potential value investors in the audience. If you're looking for that motivational boost during a critical juncture in your investing career, this might just be it. So let's dive in. Two women who each sold the business to Berkshire Hathaway for millions of dollars. It's just incredible what committed people who are willing to change their lives can do. And these people have at least one thing in common. They know that they have what it takes to be successful. They have it in them. They know they could be something beyond what they currently are. They're always willing to invest their energies to upgrade their lives. Buffett shares a short story about women who had to do it all without requisite resources. And guess what? They pulled it off without a shrug of disbelief. Two women started their business from $2,500 coincidentally, and both of them sold it to Berkshire Hathaway for millions of dollars. They had to live hand to mouth, and this was all they had at that moment. One of them was a woman who shifted to Seattle in 1917, and she couldn't speak a word of English. She had a tag around her neck that said Ford Dodge, Iowa. The Red Cross got her to Ford Dodge where she was reunited with her husband who came back to the United States two years earlier than she did. She lived in Ford Dodge for two years and she described it as feeling like a dummy. She couldn't understand what people were speaking, she couldn't pick up the language. And that was when she decided that her life had to change. She and her husband decided to move to Omaha. So they came to Omaha in 1919. And there, she found a small colony of Russian Jews, so she started to feel more at home. But then, as her oldest daughter went to school, she would come to her, her daughter named Frances, and she would teach her mother the words she learned every day. This woman, Rose Blumkin, saved money for 20 years and got her siblings over and then her parents. She sold clothing and started to earn $50 at a time. She had four children during this period, and by 1937, after almost 20 years of living in Omaha, she saved $2,500. That is when she went to Chicago and bought the furniture she could with that money. Her dream had always been to open a furniture store of her own. This woman, who had never gone to school one day in her life, with $2,500, but with the same spirit every value investor had about having a dream, and then working tirelessly to achieve that dream, she built a business of her own. This was that business that she sold to Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway in 1983 for $60 million approximately. And this is the same business that helped earn Berkshire Hathaway business worth $1.5 billion. Now, the fourth generation is working in that business. This woman, Rose Blumkin, worked for Warren Buffett until she was 103 years old. But one thing is for certain that Mrs. Blumkin, with her $2,500, could not read or write and she went into the furniture business. The interesting part is that she didn't bring anything unique in furniture, but she brought a determination to succeed. A major part of her belief was that she knew she could outwork anyone else. She knew she cared about her customers. She worked at very low gross margins, but she succeeded in building this incredible business. Astonishingly, Buffett came across another woman who did the same thing with $2,500 and Berkshire Hathaway paid her hundreds of millions of dollars for the empire she created. The guy from the Midwest. Here's a person from the Midwest who turned down Buffett when he approached him to buy his business. Jack was born eight years before Buffett in 1922. He was a pretty good athlete, but he didn't like school much. The company he built hires more college graduates each year than any other company in the United States. Now, this guy was destined for it, but he didn't know it. 
Jack went to college for a year, but then dropped out. He was not interested in colleges or schools. The year he dropped out was 1941, and when the United States came under attack in 1943, he went to the Army Air Force recruiting station and volunteered. But they turned him down because he had a hay fever at that time. He went over to the Navy and again volunteered. They took him and put him on an aircraft carrier. So he flew small fighter planes during the Second World War. He won two distinguished flying crosses from the Navy and when he came to the Midwest. Now, he's a young guy, 23 or 24 years old at this time. The interesting part is that when he came to the Midwest, he went from one job to another for a short period. Then he finally became a used car salesman at a Cadillac dealership in St. Louis, Missouri. At age 35, he moved up in the organization. It was at this point when he said to his boss, can I go into the car leasing business with you? The boss replied saying, well, if you'll cut your salary in half, and you'll come with $25,000 and we could become partners in the car leasing company. So Jack started at age 35 in a car leasing business. He had seven cars, so at the start, it was pretty slow. One of the things which he did was that whenever the phone rang, he let it ring three or four times so that people would think he was very busy answering other phones. And of course, that might have been the only call he was going to receive all day. So his first venture was neither good nor bad, but it was not going anywhere. There's a lesson in this for all of us. It was at age 40 when he decided that with 17 vehicles under his belt, he was going to compete in the rental car business. Now with those 17 cars, he's taking on Hertz, Avis and National, and even more companies with more than a thousand cars available for service, and he's got 17 cars. To be honest, his cars aren't any different from the cars he was competing with. He was buying them from General Motors, Ford, or even Chrysler. He can't get those airport locations because those companies have them all sewed up. But one thing about him was that he was determined that he would offer the customer friendlier service than they've ever seen. So he started a company and named it after a battleship he'd flown in the Pacific, which was the USS Enterprise. When he died, his rent-a-car company, starting from those 17 cars, was worth more than Hertz, Avis, and the rest of the rental car companies put together. He did not create artificial intelligence, nor was he involved in any kind of mysterious research that led to technological advancement in the world. The only thing he was focused on was that he was going to live his life based on a creed, and that was to delight his customers. If people like Rose Blumkin and Jack Taylor can do it, why can't you? The world is riddled with people who started from scratch and then turned their businesses into million dollar enterprises. If you're starting your investing journey, you might want to refer to the free ebook that explains the six different stock categories of stocks that can help you a lot in your journey to becoming a successful value investor. This will give you an advantage over other investors who don't know how to make money with those six different stock categories. Subscribe and turn on the notification button. Check out the video we handpicked for you and we'll see you in the next one.